Hey guys, I hope you're all doing well. So, the end of the year is upon us. It is December. It's about to be 2018. I just got used to writing 2017. Nevertheless, time goes on. And I'm bringing you my favorite face products of 2017. So, you know, a lot of us beauty YouTubers do our favorite products of the year. However, uh, theme, which way, however we want to do it. Uh, I usually do like one big video. But I really wanted to talk to you guys about these products and not like rush through eyes, lips, face because there is a lot. Um, I'm going to break it up into eyes, lips, face and then one more bonus video where I'll do tools and maybe brushes and uh, skincare and techniques that I've done this year. Things like that. So this video is Strictly Face Favorite Products of 2017. I will say this goes for this video and all the videos. Everything that I mentioned I didn't necessarily get in 2017. It's just my favorite products that I use throughout the year. There are some new ones in here from 2017, but then there are also just some true, tried and true, OG type of products um, where you just keep going back to them. I try a lot of things throughout the year, and some things just you keep going back to because they're just that good. So I'm going to share with you my favorite products at the face products at the end of 2017. So here we go. Let's start, I guess, in the order that you do your face. So primers. There are two primers that take it for me. Uh, as far as mattifying, you know, doing the things that I like. Uh, the Rimmel Stay Matte Primer. I actually just opened a new one. Okay, this primer is in the drugstore. It's about $4. This mattifies my face. It helps my makeup last long. It doesn't give any residue, any flakiness, any anything like that. I'm sorry if I sound a little nasally, a little stuffy. Uh... Yeah, so this Day Matte Primer, tried and true, has been a favorite for years. Um, I just purchased like three backups because they were on clearance at Ulta and I got scared that they were going to be discontinued. But yes, it controls shine, minimizes pores a little bit. I'm actually just reading this uh, on the front. Minimizes pores a little bit. Says hydrating feel. I don't know. My, fin my skin doesn't feel super dry, but... I don't feel any extra hydration. Uh, yeah, it smooths my skin. And it's definitely a great mattifying primer for oily skin. I recommend. I can't recommend it enough to those that have oily skin. Looking for a good drugstore primer. Okay. <laughs> the next one is the Urban Decay D-Slick. So, this is the Rimmel Stay Matte bumped up just a little bit. When I tell you this bad boy, you see how much I've used in this year. This bad boy... <sighs> Again, it's like the Rimmel Stay Matte bumped up. This is definitely, this is the, yeah, the D Slick Complexion Primer. They have a series of primers. This is the Shine Control Pore Minimizing and Mattifying Primer. Boy, when I tell you, this primer, it completely, it doesn't suck the moisture out, but it completely, like, dry. Like, I don't want to say, like, dry in a bad way, but definitely, yeah, I mattify, it is hardcore. The only thing is... I wear this one under full coverage foundations because it is so drying, if you will, that it makes me ashy. It make, When I put it on, it makes me a little ashy and it gives that, that dry look to the skin. And if I'm putting it under my foundation, I don't mind it because uh, I usually wear full coverage foundation. So, yeah, but if that's something like if you, I would wear it on a BB cream or light coverage because you will see it coming through. But I put this under my full coverage foundations and my powder and contour, all that, and you don't see it. But that's just... That's just something you should be wary of. But these two. Palm.com. All right. And then we have some foundations. Uh, two of these foundations I think I got in 2017. Um, and the other two just OG. Uh, so the first two, uh, I don't think I got them in 2017. I might have. See, that's why I said it's not all new things. But when I don't know what foundation to wear up until... Uh, Maybe a few months ago. But if I didn't know, since I got these, and when I didn't know what foundation to wear, but I knew I wanted a nice, warm, matte, natural foundation, but still full coverage, still great coverage, I would go to my L'Oreal Pro, L'Oreal infallible pro matte and pro glow foundations both of them win because i mix them together uh i love the pro matte when that came out i love the pro glow because it's not that glowy to me but mixing them together was wonderful and that's how i always wear them i always wear them mixed together now um i am in shade 112 
cocoa in the pro matte and i'm in shade 212 cocoa in the pro glow um and they are just wonderful l'oreal came out with like a total coverage foundation and while i do like that foundation it is really total coverage i prefer the look uh i prefer the more natural look uh of these two on an everyday basis than the other one but yes they're wonderful long wearing i don't know if they last 24 hours it says up 24 hours i ain't wear my foundation 24 hours but long wearing beautiful finish these two mixed together you get that matte but you don't get that dry cakey wonderful these foundations run a little warm like a little orange once i have my powder and everything on you're not going to be able to tell but i just wanted to let you guys know that but definitely if i don't know what foundation to wear i'm grabbing these two mix them together and i know i got something bomb wonderful wonderful the other two foundations uh this one is urban decay all nighter I don't know if it was this year or last year when I purchased this. Um, this made me like Urban Decay's foundations because I had the Urban Decay Naked Skin and the color was off for me and I still didn't like it. Even like it was 12.0 but it was... I don't know. I just didn't like it. Uh, this is shade 12.0 and this is a perfect match for me. But anyway, this is the All Nighter waterproof long wear liquid foundation i don't know about waterproof but this is definitely sweat proof this is full coverage this is uh, again it is long wearing it is a matte foundation it is a wonderful foundation this is one that i say um you know how some people say wow your skin looks good this is one girl your makeup looks good like i don't want to wear makeup and it looks like i'm not wearing makeup like no makeup makeup is a thing but i'm usually not like i got this and you can see my eyes and my lips like i'm not trying to fool you by making you think i don't have on anything on my face either like no I, great makeup great makeup that's the only thing i can say and another great makeup that's in the running um with the urban decay uh except this one with sweating um, the Urban Decay is a little bit more sweat proof than this one. And this is the Fiona Styles Matte Finish Foundation Concentrate. Honey Child, this is wonderful. Now, what I bought this full price, I wasn't into that brand. I did not know. I didn't know, but I would walk past it and also it is what it is. But it went on clearance. This foundation went on clearance. And I think I purchased it for like $6. Uh, it went on clearance and I was like, I'm going to give it a try. Because she has a matte finish and like a... a glowy finish one um is again shade 10 and i was like i'm gonna give it a try I fell in love with it it went on clearance even lower so funny it's originally thirty dollars it was originally thirty dollars i picked up one for a dollar and 87 cent like Things like that don't happen to me. <laughs> so I already have a backup. This is a wonderful foundation. I am wearing this now. I am wearing this today. Uh, and it is, it's just beautiful. And I know I'm running out of adjectives. But it is beautiful. Again, long wearing matte. You guys, you can tell what I like at a foundation. Uh, full coverage. And yes, just a beautiful finish on the skin. The Urban Decay, you go, it's going to pull you, it's going to take you a little bit farther. Wear Urban Decay all night into the club all night um <laughs> but this one for everything else and then if you don't know at all what the wear you can do that l'oreal so those are um the ones that foundations yeah um uh, i should have did my color correction first but i got really big into color correcting this year uh if you don't know what color correcting is it is using a colored cream product or concealer um or cream product cream corrector if you will to um cancel out any other color discoloration you might have on your face based on what's opposite on the color wheel so that's what color correction is and i picked up uh for 25 dollars at sephora it's on clearance and it's still on clearance uh sephora and the pantone universe what is it called what is it called palette correct and conceal or correct and conceal palette if you will and this is what it looks like you get uh, but this is actually in my makeup kit. I have the dark one and the light one. This is the dark one. Um, you get all these shades of concealer foundation. If you, you know, don't know how you want to wear them. If you want to do the spotting, spot application. And then you have color correctors on this side. This is my favorite one. You can tell I'm almost out of it. I will have a back. Do I have a backup? Oh, no. No, I have. I bought the one for my kid. I didn't buy a backup. I should get a backup. Um, but this is the peachy corrector that I use. I color correct it today. Um, and it is wonderful. I put that on. It's really creamy. I put that on and I'll set it with a powder and then I'll put my foundation over top and it really cancels out. It doesn't necessarily brighten, but it cancels out the, uh, darker areas, the darker purpley plummy areas under my eyes. And I don't always have dark circles and stuff under my eyes so i don't color correct like every day but this is pretty much the only color correct i have been using since i've purchased it so 
That's a good one. Highly recommend it. It's on clearance in Sephora right now. All right, let's go to concealer. So I don't have any drugstore concealer um, that I like that blew my mind this year. Um, I still have favorites, uh, NARS, uh, Urban Decay, those type of things. But this year, um, back in April, when I went to IMATS, I bought a concealer. Well, not from IMATS, I bought it at Sephora. I bought a concealer that just. Oh, change the game. I um, mean, it is from NARS. When I was talking about the other NARS, I meant my Radiant Creamy. I still love that one. But the NARS Soft Matte Complete Concealers. These in a jar. I have Cafe, which is my skin tone, and Amand, which is a lighter one that I use under the eyes. So let me show you. Beautiful. Be oh God. Look at it. I'm done. I'm done. Beautiful. This concealer. This concealer is one of those, you know, you just come across that product. It's like, yes, you're you're what I'm looking for. Like your true love. Okay, so this one is a again soft matte concealer. It is a creamy emollient uh cream concealer in a jar, obviously. And this is one that I can use as a foundation. Not like a full coverage foundation, but I have worn this under the eyes to cancel out dark circles. Um, not cancel out dark circles, to cover my dark circles. It works really well for that. But like on days where I don't want to wear foundation, I will literally put this on under my eyes. Any um, dark areas that I have, put it all on and put powder on. Boom. Bomb coverage. It It is, it is wonderful. Uh, you get... 6.2 grams in here for $30, though. But I will buy it again. Um, it is it is a wonderful concealer. It has a wonderful shade range. NARS has a great shade range. But again, it's really soft. It's really creamy. Um, it's not super thick uh, in texture. Like, you don't need to, like, rub it on your hands a little bit. You know how to warm it up. It's definitely... It's definitely uh, emollient enough to, to put from jar to face with a brush or a fluffy brush or maybe like a flat top kabuki, uh, the mini ones and things like that. You don't need to do so much prep before you put this on. So, yes. And then another concealer I purchased that I fell in love with was the Kat Von D Lock It Concealer Cream. This makes me so happy. Um, this is one of those concealers that I... I don't necessarily like more. They're, they're, they're right here under the NARS Radiant Creamy. You want to know why she's right here under the NARS Radiant Creamy? Shade range. Um, This shade range is nothing compared to the NARS Radiant Creamy. I can only use this concealer to highlight under the eye because that's about as deep as it goes. And which kind of makes me... I'm like, what's going on? Because our foundations go hella deep. So, I don't know. That bothers me when companies don't make the same amount of concealers as they do foundations. <sighs> Anyway, I digress. Uh, the formula is a thinner. It's a little bit thinner than the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. Um, it's definitely... Put a little bit on my hand. Yeah, but it's still... I'm trying to figure out what I can put it. Maybe like a thicker moisturizer, not a liquid. Like moisturizer consistency. Definitely a full coverage. It's a maximum coverage concealer for me. Um, especially when I color correct. Definitely a full coverage concealer. It lasts all day. It does not crease. I have topped it with many different types of powders. And it behaves... Oh, dropped my phone. And it behaves... Um, very well with all of them. I haven't had any issues with that. Again, the shade range. I'm going to need some deeper ones. When I love a concealer, y'all, I'm... I'm I'm going to need some deeper ones, and I'm sure she would come out with more. Although she has a white one. She has a really fair. She has a white one, which I thought was brilliant uh, for pale men and women who, you know, want that brightness and things like that, or to mix or whatever. I thought that was wonderful. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to need her. Hurry up. Hurry up. Uh, but yeah, that's the Kat Von D uh, Locket Concealer Cream. All right, y'all. We almost there. Uh, powders. Uh, my favorite powders. Only one of them, I think. Only one of them. Yeah, one of them I got from. I don't know why I thought I had three powders. I had two. Two different types of powder. Um, And only one of them I got this year. But, it's okay. The first one, you guys know. You guys know it's a favorite. This is another one that's the OG. I don't know what powder to wear. I'm grabbing these. Black Radiant Soft Focus Finishing Powder. If I don't know what powder to wear. I don't know if my foundation is a little bit off. Like, if it's, it's a little bit off. uh, Too light or whatever. Soft Focus Finishing Powder in the shade Milk Chocolate. This is a $6 powder. You can find it in the drugstore. Um, 
And I beat these bad boys up. Look at it. It's falling up. I beat these up so much. They are my go-to. Um, when I'm packing or traveling, I really don't know what powder to bring. I'm throwing them in there. Um, this is the milk chocolate one. It gives me a little bit of coverage, but it definitely has that tone in it where it can correct any foundation and make it look how it's supposed to look on my face if I need to. Definitely soft. Looks really good under HD. I know this, this powder is just wonderful. I have milk chocolate finish. I use that one all over the face. And then I use golden almond finish i have that on under my eyes no matter what concealer i'm wearing to definitely set the under eye area and brighten it up and add that little bit of yellow warmth i like under my eyes uh the next powder that i have i'm actually really proud of myself for using it because i've always i'm it's not that i'm not a fan of loose powder i was afraid of her translucent powder even though it's like OG holy grail I love it now but specifically this deep one um really changed the game for me and that's the Laura Mercier uh translucent loose setting powder in medium deep okay I purchased this one back in April and this has been the loose powder I've been using ever since um I mean I've gone through here and there but this is another one I ver revert back to what I'm trying to say. Wonderful, lightweight, really finely milled powder. Doesn't have as much coverage as the soft focus one. So, like, this is not, I'm not going to use this to maybe to adjust a foundation. Excuse me. A little rumble in my throat. To adjust a foundation shade tremendously or anything like that. I wouldn't use it for that. But this definitely sets my full coverage foundations. And it definitely sets them in a way where it doesn't add another layer of cake. So like this, if I have a full coverage foundation, yeah, I put this on and it adjusts the tone and makes it look wonderful. But I still like it feel a little better if I sprayed it with some Fix Plus or something like that to really just melt everything together. This one is so finely milled that it doesn't even add... An even a, a significant layer at all to the look of the makeup so that's something I can really appreciate there's a lot in here I've been using it up and it's still full and so yeah Laura Mercier all right contour I only have one that has like again OG keep reverting back to it over and over and over again and that's the black radiance true complexion ugh, true complexion contour palette I don't know how long I've had this. And I specifically use the contour shade. I don't use the sculpt or the highlight shade. The highlight is pretty. I've used it before. But I use this palette for the contour shade. It is the perfect contour shade for me. The only gripe that I have is it doesn't come in a deeper palette. This is medium to deep. Medium to dark. I'm sorry. And Black Radiance is geared toward women of color. And I am not the darkest. Like, I'm going to need them. And this is not a dramatic contour for me. This is definitely that everyday chiseled look it's not like fully sculpted contour i go for something a little bit deeper but this one definitely is that every day when i don't know what contour to use <laughs> i'm using this one uh and just a side note i think everyone if you have a big collection I don't have like everyday products like I don't have an everyday best I have too much makeup to use things every day like to use the same things every day however sometimes you just be like I don't know which one to put on you should find a favorite you should have a favorite that uh, in each category that when in doubt you can wear that um and also like when in doubt you don't know what to pack you pack those so just a sidebar I think everyone should have that that uh type of product in their collection all right <sighs> blush this year has been the year of the MAC blush for me. Uh, I have a lot of blush. I love blush. I really do. But another, when in doubt, go with everything. MAC Raisin. You guys, I have raved about this blush. Um, this specific shade is like my go with everything shade. But MAC blushes as a whole, like they have a great range of blushes for women of color. I can't recommend them enough. I mean, they have all skin tones, but like sometimes it's hard for us to find deeper shades of blush. I'm pulling them out. Deeper shades of blush um, to, you know, have and use. So Raisin is my most used one followed by amber and rose which is a shimmer mac raisin is matte but this is a shimmery shimmery pinky beach blush uh oh wonderful wonderful uh but anyway just like a couple deep ones that i have that i really like for example uh film noir film noir look at that blush Ooh, shorty. Some people contour with this, and I think it's beautiful. Um, and then you have Sketch, which is like a deeper, plummier blush. Oh, 
beautiful so yeah I really like max range of blushes at a, as a whole and like my favorite go-to again for the year and all years probably so take a while to replace this is definitely uh oh that's fever look at me holding up the wrong one raisin raisin's a lot more neutral than fever is that's fever raisin wonderful all right, y'all. Last product of the face. Highlighter. I love highlighter as well. It just sparkle and shine. I like more shine and catching the lights and sparkle on my highlighters. But oh, highlighter. Highlighter. Now, I have two. I have two um, groups of highlighter. I have two products of highlighter that I just love the range at all. I recommend the range overall. Um, and I definitely think if you don't own one, you should pick up one because you're probably going to find a go-to when in doubt type of product. Um, the first ones are the MAC Mineralized Skin Finishes. Bomb highlighters. Wonderful. Uh, I am holding right here Gold Deposit. Any warm brown sister, I'm telling you, with, with warm undertones, Gold Deposit is the perfect gold highlight. I haven't seen it look bad on anyone. Wonderful. These are, I forgot how much they are, 20 or 30 bucks. You're never going to, it's a baked product. It's, I'm never going to finish one. Like, they're wonderful. What else I got here? And then Global Glow. I have a couple of them, but just showing you two of them. Beautiful, beautiful. They, they don't have like glitter and like that glitter sparkle in them. They're just like pure like pressed goodness that when the light hits, beautiful shine beautiful um just reflection it's they're wonderful i recommend those and the other ones i recommend if you just one you have to own all of them but an anastasia beverly hills glow kit she has come out with a bunch um some are discontinued i'm holding sun dipped here but just to, just to show you um they come with four pans uh that are ready to be taken out and popped into a Z palette, labeled and everything for you, um, already ready to go, which I think is wonderful for forty dollars. They have a great array of shades. Each glow kit usually has like a deep one, then a light one, and then two mid tone ones. Um, wonderful. These are really finely pressed. They're not as fine as the Mac Mineral S skin finishes, but they're a uh, um, a finer pressed highlight than say uh, I don't know. I don't have any chunky highlights but on the finer side of press. They reflect the light well. They have a lot of complimentary shades. So if you have a glow kit, uh, let's say you might not know what highlighter complements you. You're getting four here to try and even mix up, if you will. This is another, uh, when in doubt, like when in doubt uh, category of highlighters that I reach for. When in doubt, um, and I'm wearing warm, I like warm, matte gold deposit. But just in general, like what highlighter I want to wear, I always go to the glow kits. Like I always go to the glow kits and look through those first. I just do. I have a lot of highlighters, but I just do. They, I know they're going to be reliable. I know whatever color I choose is going to be just as pigmented as the next one. And I can really trust, trust these products. And then I have one more highlighter that swept me off my feet this year. And it is the Maybelline Master Chrome uh highlighter illuminator and it is shade 100 molten gold i think this is the only one i know she there's a rainbow highlighter but i think this is the only like regular colored highlighter this bad boy whoo it's a little bit powder powder more powdery than the other two that i've mentioned but it's definitely that gold like matte gold deposit type of gold reflect that you need for a fraction of the price so let me go ahead. It's a little bit yellower than matte gold deposit. You see how there's no sparkle or glitter? It's just straight up reflect of light. And that's what I like in a highlight. Uh, but yeah, that one, I want them to come out with some more shades. But this molten gold, maybe even a... This molten gold is good, but maybe even a deeper gold. Bronze or copper highlighter. Wonderful. That is the Maybelline Master Chrome in molten gold. I highly, highly recommend that one. Yes, yeah, a little bit more powdery. Hope it, it looks like if I drop it in a break, I'm not gonna drop it, but I'm just saying uh, it just looks like that based on how it's pressed in the pan. All right, almost done, almost done. 
sprays. I put these in this uh, face category because they're more makeup related than skincare related. So, uh, the first spray has been a favorite for years. It is the MAC Fix Plus. This is a setting spray. Uh, I use it as a setting spray. Really quickly, the difference between a setting spray and a finishing spray. Um, a setting spray sets your makeup and kind of melts it to look melts it all together so like if you have on like a lot of you know full coverage and 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 powder and all this and it looks a little cakey you spray your setting spray to kind of melt everything together calm that powderiness down but not add any dewiness unless they have dewy setting sprays but you know um I use Fix Plus for that. And once it dries, it just my makeup looks a little bit more cohesive and not layers on top of each other. So Fix Plus has been that for me for years. Uh, wonderful. It's, it's a wonderful setting spray. They had some scented ones. I got one. I managed to snag the lavender one a while ago when they came out. But like those scented ones, you know I want the rose one, you guys. You know I love rose. But anyway, you can just get the plain one from MAC, and it is wonderful, and it lasts a long time. They also have a mini one for like $10 if you don't want to commit to that one. I think that one's an Ulta. Um, and then you have Finishing Spray. Makeup Finishing Spray is the one that adds that longevity to your makeup, make it last longer, usually gives you some sort of finish, some mattifying finish, oil control, and makes it last longer, and that's what the claims are on Finishing Sprays. And my two that have change the game well they changed the game for me but not this year when i got lash whatever uh the first one is the makeup revolution uh pro fix oil control fixing spray i have noticed that this one has added to um keeping my face uh less oily nothing is going to combat this oil 100 percent all night long because my oil is my oil is a different type of oil i'm just saying <laughs> Um, but anyway, this is definitely how combat it. Uh, I think this was six or eight dollars from Ulta. And it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's an oil control fixing spray. Um, and this is in the setting spray category. Um, although I do do it after my fix plus and things like that. So it says it's in the setting spray category. But it says, keeps it in place, no smudging or fading that lasts for just 12 hours. Sounds like a finishing spray to me, but that's what the overall definitions, you know. And then finally, which I know is definitely a finishing spray, a makeup sealer, if you will, Ben Nye Final Seal. This stuff is like tar. Um, it is. It is. This is what, if I'm not mistaken, like theatrical um, work, um employees use like when they're on on stage and everything to really set that makeup in that heavy makeup and it does do the job i will say this though sometimes this can dry my skin out a bit so by the end of the night it's matte but it looks a little dry because it's probably so much alcohol in here um probably so yeah it's the first ingredient um so but it works it does last for a long time and this is something if you got a show you need to perform you be sweating this been my final seal and i only use this on important days big days because i got mine at a discount from imats and it was still 18 dollars uh so so yeah that's it you guys those are my favorite face go-to products of 2017 um this year has been great in makeup and i have and just so you know i have a lot of other favorites i have a bunch of favorites and face in all categories but i wanted to really narrow it down to just those products that keep going back to keep going back to keep going back to because they just they just do it for me um i will be doing videos on eyes and lips and a bonus video as well so thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, go ahead and leave them down below. Um, I love you all, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.